Winning the lottery in Magic the Gathering is as easy as knowing what to look for. You came back. You saw something and you said, you know what? I gotta check this guy out again. Welcome back everyone. MTG Moxman here. Thanks for hanging out with me today on the channel. And no, this is not a get rich quick scheme video. Sorry. And nor is it a philosophical video of like you win the lottery by not playing. It's not that either. It's something else. Every time Wizards of the Coast puts together a new set, a new standard set, a new commander deck set, whatever it may be, there is a chance, no matter how remote, no matter how much R&D and development and play testing they do, there is a chance it breaks another card or makes an amazing combo, either by design or by pure accident. This can happen. So the worst thing you can do when you find out about one of these amazing combos is to chase it. Unless you're the first one out the post, the first one to recognize what's just happened and you can get on TCG player and buy all kinds of copies, go to your local store and buy them. If you're not that first person or the first 10 people, you will start to see the price increase as stores recognize what's happened, as YouTube content creators put together videos, as new blogs and posts go up showing this combination. And now you're in the FOMO hype chase and the price keeps going up. Don't do that. Just be patient. The 10 days is the hardest. Combos calm down. The hype wears off and you can pick them up later. You'll still get the chance to play test it, but you'll save yourself a fortune in money. And if you are the first person to make it out that post and get those cards to market and resell them, yeah, speculators and people like that make a killing doing this. You can too if you're that far ahead of the curve. I have done it myself the odd time, but I'm nowhere near as efficient at it as some people. Now today's video, we're going to go over some cards, some cool combinations of cards and why you should wait because some of these combinations are kind of old now and the prices have really come down and that makes them affordable for players who didn't get the chance to buy them at the FOMO hype level. It's the worst thing is chasing it. Don't chase that money away. Keep the money in your wallet and wait for it. But let's check out these cards. Let me talk you guys through this stuff and we'll see where I'm going with it. Our first card is an example of chasing. This is Mind Over Matter from Exodus, a reserve list card. And up till a few days ago, this card was $35 US near mint. You could find played copies for 20 bucks on TCG player. So what happened? Why did this card all of a sudden jump all the way up to that average of 89 with a market price of 53? Well, it's, it's really quite simple guys. It's the one ring from Lord of the Rings, that four casting cost indestructible artifact. And it's the last ability. Put a burden counter on the one ring, then draw a card for each burden counter on the one ring. And what we're talking about that, that amazing ability is because mind over matter from Exodus allows you to choose and discard a card and then tap or untap target land, artifact, or creature. And in this case, it's an infinite combo to draw. Depending on how you manage to get mind over matter out, get the one ring, keep them in play. However, it's going to work. This is what players are chasing right now. And it's a pure example of why you shouldn't chase a card. Mind over matter has been high before and been drifting down. And now out of the blue, because of a new set coming out, it is having an abundance of excitement built around this card. And it's not the first time cards like this have jumped up. And when you recognize that fact, you can wait for it to go down, but somebody, Somebody out there in the YouTube land of happiness and magic found out. Some speculator, some group of people recognized this right away and bought a lot of copies. And that's why we see the spike in the market. But that's why it's a chase. They're not keeping all these copies. They will filter them back onto the market at a profit. And if you're smart, you will just wait until things calm down. That's the smart money is waiting this out. It may be a great combo to try, but you got to be willing sometimes to just let this lie. Don't dive into it. Wait for it. And there's other examples of why you should wait. And let's get to one of them right now. The next card I'm going to share with you is Paradigm Shift from Weatherlight. This card at one point was around $50 in value, but look at it now, $8.82. 
So people say, what combo is available with this? Look at the card. One blue, one generic sorcery. Remove all cards in your library from the game. Shuffle your graveyard into the library. It's a very weird and unique kind of ability for a reserveless card, isn't it? And most people ignored it. But then something strange happened. A card was made that fits perfectly with it, and that is Thassa's Oracle. Good old Theros block, right? When Thassa's Oracle enters the battlefield, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is your devotion to blue. Put up to one of them on top of your library and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. If X is greater than or equal to the number of cards in your library, you win the game. Do you get it? You're exiling your library except for Thassa's Oracle and Paradigm Shift, and you just won the game. You just win. What a crazy combination that's actually very easy to get going because it's lots of things will let you fetch a creature, lots of things let you go get that sorcery. So what happened? The hype died down. The hype just went away. And that's the moment. When the hype dies down and the people who want to try that combination are bored of it and the market forgets because most players don't have a long attention span. When the card dips down, that's when you buy it. Because no one's interested. Maybe just you. Or you think of it long term. The combo may have died down for now, but it can come back. Or the popularity of that combo can come back around again. And that's when players decide to grab a play set of four just in case it comes around and they can profit from the lack of understanding within the market and how it works. The fact that players can't pay attention long term means that any great card combination eventually dies down and the money moves on to something else. Now, the last couple of cards I want to share with you are kind of cards unto themselves. They can, they can deal with some problems that bother you all the time and they don't cost an arm and a leg, but they are reserveless cards. Now, the first one I want to share with you is Humility. This is from Tempest. Now, this card's been up to a hundred bucks, but it's what it does right now. If you really hate Infect, you hate dealing with this stuff, Humility is one of those cards that you love to have around. And look at the card. Two white, two other enchantment. All creatures lose all abilities and it's a 1-1 one, one creature. Now, what I've liked to do with cards like this, players never see it coming. They just don't expect seeing old school cards like this. And this one's still dipping in price. It's probably not done falling yet, but it's a card you can keep an eye on. Maybe trade in at an LGS, some of the other cards you're not using anymore to get reserve list cards like this. But the real difference is once you own a reserve list card, just don't sell it. Because we know now that any card that's of value will get a reprint at some point for non-reserve list cards. But reserve list cards are a finite commodity. Until Wizards decides to slash and burn the world, it looks like the reserve list is here to stay. Which means any of these cards, after you own them, there's a phrase we always use here on the channel, hold the line. Which means you buy the card, you hold it, because you don't want to regret selling it later and at a loss if the card jumps up again. And yet you may not be using it, but you might as well put it in a binder, put it aside because you've already paid for it. High or low, you bought it, you might as well keep it and own it. Now, the last card I want to share with you, this is another fun one that a lot of people forget about. And here we have Academy Rector. All right, guys, a classic card from back in the day. Urza's Destiny, one white, three generic. It's a one, two cleric. Now, it says when Academy Rector is put into the graveyard from play, you may remove Academy Rector from the game. If you do, search your library for an enchantment card and put that card into play, then shuffle your library. I mean, this card's very playable in Commander, and with all the crazy combinations out there and all the amazing enchantment cards you may choose to chase down, how long do you think it takes for a card like this to become broken? How long until Humility does something game-ending? That's the crazy thing about a lot of old-style reserve list cards. They look very linear, very one-sided, or completely useless in some cases. But in the end, a lot of these cards have value. They end up having some crazy combination from something else, like what's happened with the One Ring with Mind Over Matter. Things come along to break them. And these are perfect examples of why when you buy a reserve list card, you generally should just hold on to it. You may become a little bit... 
you know, disillusioned with the card, but you never know what's coming down the line. It's very interesting in Magic the Gathering how these things play out time and time again with people losing interest and somebody else capitalizing on your losses that now become their gains. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Smash those comments. Put down some crazy combos you think I missed. I can't wait to read them. Have a fantastic day tomorrow. And don't forget, this weekend, we have our Hot 10 videos coming up. We have our regular Hot 10 on Saturday. And of course, you will not want to miss the Reserve List Hot 10 this Sunday. And of course, the live stream is Sundays, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. Looking forward to seeing you all there. Hey guys, a big shout out and thank you. Not just to all my amazing patrons who support me every day, but to all the regular viewers out there for allowing me to entertain you with my videos and you guys tuning in. It's an amazing experience. Thanks for being here. Have a great day. Always stay calm, cool, and collected. I don't take my own advice, but I recommend you take it. Guys, welcome back to the end of the video. MTG Moxman here, and my little mini Mox got me started playing this game Clash of Clans, and, and I, I went to war, apparently. I did okay. I got two stars. It's weird. I don't know. I'm learning the game. We're, we're getting there. I'm an old man playing, you know, kitty games. But the Mini Mox liked it, so I said, why not? So, guys, when it comes to this type of buying, don't buy into that hype. It's the easiest way of winning is waiting later on and buying. If you want to try that combo, wait till the end. Just wait for it to die down. You think Mind Over Matter is going to stay this high? No. A new combination, a new crazy thing comes along. But when it comes to reserve list cards, hold the line, guys. Don't sell that stuff because this is exactly what can happen. And when Mind Over Matter was 20 bucks and I bought a whole bunch, I'm glad I kept them. I only bought six, but... And I actually, I guess I gave a few in the Patreon box. I think I have four left, but either way, I'm glad I got mine out of the way. So now I get the one ring, I can try the combo out. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Have an awesome day today. Can't wait to see you guys for this weekend. We are going to have so much fun.